Welcome to the routing how-to of the Roborock S6 and T6 model. Here we'll show you how to get control over your vacuum cleaning robot. Before we start, here are a few comments. Please watch the whole video before you start your adventure. If you don't have a technical background, you might be a little bit overwhelmed by this. Also, all the comments we use here are linked in the description. You can copy and paste them from the sheet sheet or from the document. To root the device, we need a few tools. For example, we need screwdrivers to disassemble the device. Um, I created a step-by-step -step video about how to do that exactly. It's linked in the description. Also, we need a UART to USB adapter. You might find them under various names like serial adapters or TTL adapters. The important thing here is that uh, they need to support 3.3 logic level. Um, usually you get them very cheaply over Amazon or even in your local stores for like less than $10 or euros. Um, for the actual connection, we need a few isolated copper wires or breadboard jumper wires. Also some tape might be useful. On the software side, we need also tools to access serial, SSH, and to do file transfers. Under Windows, you might use PuTTY or WinSCP. Under Linux, there is Minicom or SCP. Um, you might find all the software for free on the internet. Here are some additional requirements. A Wi-Fi capable device like a laptop might be very, really, really helpful. If you don't have that, then you might need to provision your device in advance and need to know its IP address. Um, also make sure that your battery is charged. Okay, let's talk why do we want to get root access in the first place. Um, many users purchased their robot as the T6 model, which is geo-blocked outside of mainland China. So um, with root access, you, you can remove this geo-blocking. Probably the more important reason for most of the people is to be able to use the Valutudo software, which replaces the cloud functionality with open source software. This also enables you to integrate the device in your home automation software very easily. And additionally, we can also install our own so sound files and voices. Let's talk about some difference between the six series and the previous models. From the hardware perspective, it's mostly the same. So Roborock uses the same CPU, RAM, flash, and MCU. In comparison to the S5, the models are really, really similar. However, Roborock added an additional filter for the fan, which apparently reduces noise. There are also two additional infrared drop sensors and a new type of wheels. If you want to believe the marketing material, the robot can climb higher obstacles with that. Also, they use now a new uh, main brush, which is easier to clean. The changes on the software side are a little bit more substantial. The firmware is now encrypted and signed. This is the reason why we cannot use the previous routing methods and um, route this device very easily. Also, the configuration is now signed and bound to the CPU ID. Roborock apparently didn't like that people buy cheap robots from China and use them somewhere else. So there is no um, simple possibility anymore to switch the region in the configuration files. A real change is the Tuya integration as an alternative to the cl Xiaomi cloud. Tuya is used when you provision the device with the Roborock app instead of using the Mi Home app. For the next few minutes, I would like to talk about some technical details of your vacuum cleaning robot. If you're not interested, you can just skip them. Your robot contains an all winner quad core CPU and has 4 GB of flash memory. The quad core can use 512 MB of DDR3 RAM. For all real time activities like sensors or motor control, there's an additional chip, which is the STM32 MCU. The Wi Fi connectivity is done with the Realtek module, which only supports 2.4 GHz networks. All right, let's take a closer look at the software on the robot. The robot runs Ubuntu 14.04. Depending on the firmware version, you might have a regular Ubuntu, or like a newer version, you might have a stripped one. The program which controls the robot itself is called Player. Roborock relabeled it recently as their error loader, but under the hood it's still Player, which is an open source software. This software is also the interface um, to the STM32 and the LiDAR sensor. Roborock additionally added a lot of custom software. For example, there's the app proxy, which controls the device functionality. There are also the cloud uh, communication interfaces for the Xiaomi Cloud and Tuya. This update is responsible for the system updates. Um, and there's also like a custom ADB version, which, is, um, which enables you some management of the robot over USB. 
also an SSH server is running on a robot. Depending on the version you have, uh, you might get an open SSH or drop beer. Um, drop beer is used in newer firmware versions. And unfortunately, it doesn't support um, SFTP and only supports SCP for data transfer. Keep that in mind if you want to transfer files to it. Um, Robowork also enabled uh, the IP tables firewall in the firmware. It blocks um, the ports of SSH and the player software. Additionally, all IP version 6 traffic is blocked. Okay, um, so here we see the layout of the flash memory. Technically, we have three copies of the operation system. Um, we have a recovery uh, version of the operation system, um, which is never changed, and you can always return to the version. And we have um, system A and system B, um, where one of them is the active and the other one is the passive copy. In cases of firmware updates or broken systems, the robot will switch to the passive copy. Also, we have here the data partition, um, which contains settings, logs, and maps. If you do a factory reset, then this partition gets deleted. Let me show you how a typical firmware update on your vacuum cleaner is done. If you trigger a firmware update over the app, the cloud service will send an encrypted packet with firmware information to the vacuum cleaner. The robot will then download the package from the servers. It will check if the MD5 um, is okay. In the next step, it will verify if the signature is okay and will decrypt the package then. Um, in the next step, the package is unpacked and copied to the download partition. Then the robot will update the root password um, with the robot-specific root password. So this is um, important for later. The modified image is then copied to the passive copy of the operation system. The robot will then reboot and boot into the um, new updated copy. Then the new firmware will be written into the former active copy of the system. And now the firmware of the robot is updated. Before we start with the routing process, we need to talk about some disclaimers. I don't take any responsibilities for brick devices. I and some other people might be happy to help you, but at the end, it's still your own responsibility for your device. Um, also, you will likely void your warranty by disassembling the device. Unfortunately, that's the nature of disassembling devices. Be also very careful if you type commands. It might be a good idea to copy and paste them from my list, which is linked in the description. So our routing process is divided in three phases. In the first one, we need to disassemble the device and locate the test pads. You can watch my YouTube video for that. In phase two, we connect the UART and enable access to SSH. We might require soldering or a second person. In this phase, we will extract the root password and use it to log into Ubuntu and disable the firewall. We also connect over SSH and enable permanent root. In phase three, we will install the custom software. Um, here we copy the firmware over SSH and install it in system B. Um, after reboot, we will install it in system A. Um, basically, we do the same steps as the default firmware updates um, just by hand. So here is phase one. Here you should have disassembled the vacuum cleaner already, and you should hold the bare PCB in your hand. You need to put the small board with the buttons back on the main PCB. And that's basically all for phase one. Let's go with phase two. There are two methods to connect to the UART, the solderless method and the solder method. You can use solderless if you don't have a soldering iron. It's not as nice as the solder method, but it still works. It helps if you have a second person which can hold the virus. Ideally, you would use tape to hold the virus in place and then just press on them. Um, you don't need to care about ground if you have a spare micro USB cable and connect that to your computer. The solder method is more stable and more permanent. This is what I did to all my devices. Before you solder, you want to use tape as a strain relief. It's important that you don't pull on the cables because you might rip off the pads from the PCB. If you want to have a permanent UART, you can route your cables around the ground pads and run them to the micro USB connector. In this step, you want to set up your computer for the serial connection. You need to know where the RX and TX on your adapter is. For some adapter it's marked, but for someone it's just a particular color of cable. In my case, the white cable was RX and the green one was TX. But don't worry, if you, you cannot damage your robot if you have done it wrong. 
set your UAT program to 115200 and disable flow control. This is very important. I have shown here a few example programs. Finally, you want to test your settings. Um, you can do that by connecting the TX and RX of your adapter together and then type something. You should see some, some echo. This is what we call loopback. So in this step, we connect to the robot. First, we need to connect the battery to the PCB. There's only one way to connect it, so you shouldn't be able to do it wrong. Then we connect a serial virus to the PCB. As mentioned before, you can use a micro USB cable to get ground. Connect TX and RX. Do not connect red cable, which is 5 volt. This is very important. As a first test um, that you did everything correctly, just press the power button for, for a short time, like less than one second. It's the middle button on the PCB. If you do that, you should see some text output on your robot. If you don't see anything, then you might have mixed RX and TX in your connection. Or your connection is bad, for example, if your cables are not fitting correctly. If you see some cryptic text, your settings might be incorrect. Now comes the important part. Press and hold the S key on your computer. Then at the same time, press the middle button for three seconds. You should see some text and at some point you should have a prompt of the bootloader. If you don't see that prompt and you see the Ubuntu booting instead, then you might have forgotten to disable flow control in your terminal. Here's a quick uh, demonstration of the connection. First, we connect the battery. As you can see here, I connect the uh, micro USB cable to the front. And I use two wires. Um, I have it already soldered, but here I want to demonstrate how it looks like if you um, use the solderless method. Just make sure that the cables are sitting on the pads. And here I press the middle button to power on the board. Now you need to type these two commands. You can copy and paste them from the document in the description. Um, the first command is loading the uh, obfuscated root password into the memory, and the second one is just printing the, the, the area of the memory. If you have a second person who is holding the wires, um, you can release them now after you have sent the second command. Copy the marked string from the output. This is your obfuscated root password of your vacuum cleaning robot. Go to my website, paste the string there. This will deobfuscate the string and return the root password. Okay, let's do another demo. In this step, we need UART again. So if you disconnected it before, then you need to reconnect it. Um, we need to boot the Ubuntu Linux, and this can be done by this printed command or by just uh, repowering the, the PCB. Um, as soon as your device booted into Linux, you see the, the prompt for the login. Use user root and the previously calculated root password. If the login is successful, um, the, the first thing what you want to do is to type IP tables minus F. This will disable all the firewalls and will enable SSH. If you're holding the cables, you might release them now because the rest of the steps can be continued over SSH. If you have a stable um, UART connection, you can just continue over UART. That's fine. Um, the most important thing is that this change of the saving the firewall is not permanent. So don't uh, restart your device, don't power it off. Here's another demo.
So now we want to make SSH access permanent. Um, here we use these three commands. So this commands basically just disabling the uh, IP tables routes, which disables SSH. We just replace the port 22 by port 29, which is not useful anyway. If you want SSH to survive factory sets or um, new firmware updates, then you can also patch the recovery. Um, I listed the commands here. As mentioned before, you find all the commands in the description, um, and I would recommend to copy and paste them because you don't want to have typos in there. So um, now that you did all these previous steps, you should have now permanent root access over UART and SSH. Um, at this point, you can reassemble your device again, or you just can continue with phase three. So before we start to install the custom firmware, let's talk quickly about custom firmware updates. Um, a custom firmware update enables you different things. For example, you can change the region of your device and bypass region lock, or even better, you can run Valetudo to disable the cloud connectivity completely. Um, in this case, the region doesn't really matter and you can use the device completely freely. All right, let's talk about our strategy on installing custom firmware on the vacuum cleaner. Um, first, we need to build and download um, a custom firmware update with the Dust Builder. Then we upload this custom firmware update onto the vacuum cleaner over SCP. Um, we use Tartu and Packet and write it onto the System B partition. In the next step, we mount the System B partition and update the, the root password. So System B is at this point ready um, to be loaded. Um, we need to mark System A as bad to prevent that System A is booted again in the next reboot. Then in the next step, we reboot the vacuum cleaner and the vacuum cleaner will, will boot the new firmware. Uh, in the next step, we write our image to the System A partition and update again here the um, root password. In the next step, we mark System A as good, so, in a, so it will be used as a system partition in the next reboot. So now that you know our strategy, let's start with step one. Um, go to the Dust Builder website, uh, which is builder.dontvacuum.me, and build a firmware for your S6 T T6. Um, select ADB Valetudo 0.5 and uh, view model. It's important that you select uh, Valetudo 0.5 and not Valetudo RE because RE is, at, at the moment is not supporting S6 and T6 models. Um, then download the firmware as soon as you get the email. Now it is time to transfer the firmware package to the data partition. Um, if you use WinSCP, make sure that you select SCP and um, not SFTP. If you use Linux, you can use the command SCP. Um, as login data, we use the user root and the password which was calculated in, in phase two. Um, after you have done that, connect over SSH using the user root. Um, change into the directory mount data and run tar to unpack the firmware package. Um, if you use the command ls, you should see the files disk image, install underscore b.sh and install underscore a.sh. In this step, we start to patch the system partitions. In the first step, we run the installer for system B because this is at the moment the passive copy. Um, run the installer with bash install underscore b.sh and if this is successfully, then reboot a vacuum cleaner. After this is done, verify the correct installation. You can do that by opening your browser and access the IP address of the vacuum cleaner. Um, if everything works, then you should see Valetudo. Um, try also to SSH into the vacuum cleaner and make sure that the root password still works. Um, if this step was successful, um, then we want to patch system A um, because this is now the passive copy and go back to the uh, directory with the firmware update and run the installer by, ba by running bash install underscore a.sh. If this is successful, you can reboot the vacuum cleaner and the custom firmware should be now installed. So I would like to do a final demonstration. I already downloaded the custom firmware and now log in with WinSCP onto the vacuum cleaner. I copy now the firmware into the data folder, which can take a while depending on how fast your Wi-Fi is.
In the next step, I connect over SSH and go into the folder and unpack the firmware package. And here I run the, the installer uh, to update system B. After the script was successful, I reboot the robot. Before I update system A, I uh, open the browser and uh, try to connect to the vacuum cleaner and check that Valitude is running, and then I continue with the installer. And after you finished all the steps, you should have now installed a custom firmware. Um, keep in mind, if Valitude is behaving weirdly, then you might want to reset the Wi-Fi and um, connect to the Wi-Fi using Valitude. This might be the case if you previously have a provisioned device with the Roborock app. Um, this shouldn't be an issue if you provisioned it with the Be Home app or if your vacuum cleaner was never provisioned before. Thank you for watching. Um, feel free to follow me on Twitter or to visit my personal website.